I'm sure all of you are familiar with HDMI, the very common video connector and cable that looks like this. But this is not the only type of HDMI cable. For example, have you ever seen this weird looking one? Probably not. And there's actually five different types of HDMI connectors. The first one that you're probably most common with is type A, but there's also types A through E, kind of like how USB has different types, like USB type C. The type only refers to what the connector looks like, but the rest of the protocol and the digital amount of signal and stuff is all independent of the connector type. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the different HDMI speed ratings today. I'm just gonna talk about the different connectors because it's kind of cool. There's a couple weird ones that you've probably not seen before, including that one I just showed you. We're gonna go over what all of these are. So first of all, here's a quick rundown of the different types of HDMI connectors. So type A is the standard one. This is the one you're definitely familiar with already. Type B is referred to as dual link, and I'll definitely get to this one later. It's one of the more interesting ones. Type C is the mini HDMI. Type D is the micro HDMI. And type E is another interesting one, and it's the automotive connection system. Very rare, we'll go over that too. First, we'll just go through the three most common ones, A, C, and D, and then we'll get to the more rare ones. So like I said, type A is regular standard HDMI. Not much to say about this one. It's 19 pins. Typically, you see it on all kinds of devices, TVs, monitors, and for the most part, when someone says they need a HDMI cable, this is the exact one they're talking about. Next, type C is the mini HDMI connector. This is pretty much the same idea as the standard one, just a bit smaller, and it's usually used on more portable devices. For example, cameras, tablets, that sort of thing. And you can you can actually see this on my old Canon 5D Mark III DSLR. There is an output with mini HDMI. It has the same number of 19 pins, just like the other ones, except they are arranged differently. Instead of being on two sides of a thing, it's just one all lined up together. So yeah, this one basically just looks like a smaller version of the standard HDMI, and it was added actually in the HDMI 1.3 spec in 2006. The third common type of HDMI connector is type D, AKA the micro HDMI. And this one is way smaller even than the mini HDMI. And you can see it more resembles kind of like a USB mini or micro connector. And this was also used on portable devices. And you can actually see my Canon R5 more recent camera has a micro HDMI output on it. The micro HDMI connector also has the same 19 pins, although they are assigned differently even than both A and C. So all of them kind of have different assignments for the pins, but all the same number. And this was added in the 1.4 spec in 2009. All right, so now let's get to the two much more interesting connector types, starting with type E, which is known as the automotive connection system. And I actually had a really hard time finding out any kind of information about this connector. And while I did finally figure out what the deal is with it, it does seem to be extremely rare. It was added in the 1.4 spec of HDMI in 2009, same time as the micro. And again, it has the same kind of internal wiring and stuff. It's just the physical structure connector is what's different. And you can see it has a special locking mechanism design that goes into the port side and it's designed to really hold in there tight. And we'll get to why that is later. Now, when I was trying to figure out some info about this connector, I kept reading on every website, it pretty much said the same stuff. Like, oh, this was used in cars by auto manufacturers, that sort of thing but I could not find a single car that was advertised as having this kind of HDMI connector. I found a lot of cars that advertise as having HDMI in them, but when I went to look at them for like the display or navigation console on the connector side for the consumer, it was always just a standard HDMI port. So I was trying to figure out, is, is this even used at all? And it turns out it is, but not exactly how I was expecting. So what I did is I looked on Amazon and there are cables like this for sale and not that many, but there are a couple. And one of them had several reviews. So I was like, all right, let me look and see what people are actually using this cable for. And I found that all of them were in Japanese. There weren't that many, but they were all in Japanese. So I'm like, all right, maybe it's more used in Japan. And all of the reviews when translated mentioned different types of car navigation systems. So I Googled the names and that's when I figured out that, okay, it seems like these type E connectors are not used on the consumer side of the navigation systems, but rather on the back that kind of connects to the internals of the car. And you can actually see on these bunch of random pictures of navigation systems for sale I found, on the back of them, on the internal side, they do have these HDMI type E connectors in them. And I guess they go into the rest of the car to connect to the computer or whatever. And also in some cases, there'll be kind of like an adapter where the type E connector connects into the back 
of the navigation system, and then there's an adapter that goes into a standard HDMI port. So even though it's used on the back end, the consumer only has to use a standard connector. So that kind of really explains why there's this locking mechanism and why it has to hold in so well is because it's on the internal side. If it falls out and you're using a standard connector, the person who owns the car would have no way to know that's what happened. They would have to take out the whole dashboard and hook it back in, it would be a mess. So that's why it's important to have this locking mechanism and why it's kind of rare because it's only seen on the inside of the car that the consumer never sees. Now I did some more searching to try and figure out if there's really any other types of products that use this type E, but really I was only able to find these examples on like the Japanese version of Amazon. And again, all of them were just talking about different navigational systems in their cars. So it does very much seem like this type E connector is really only used maybe in the Japanese market, Japanese made cars. There were a couple of specific car brands I kept seeing coming up, for example, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Subaru. It seems like all of these manufacturers, at least in the Japanese market, do use type E on the internals of the car. And I was trying to figure out why this is only found in Japan apparently, because I was looking at even some US manufacturers for cars and navigational systems, and even the ones that use HDMI for the internal cables, it seems like they have a different system. They use basically a standard HDMI cable, but they all kind of have like a bracket that screws in, and that's the way they use to hold the standard HDMI cable in instead of using this type E. And I think the reason this isn't more common elsewhere is because the type E connector, I believe only works with version 1.4 of HDMI. That's when the spec came out, which obviously is not exactly as fast as more modern versions of the HDMI spec. So I think in a lot of cases, manufacturers just decide if they're gonna use an HDMI cable for an internal one, they're just gonna use a more modern one that can handle more speed and then just screw in a bracket instead of using this older one. So yeah, this type E one is probably one you'll never come across and even if you did, you would not recognize it as HDMI. All right, so now finally we can talk about HDMI type B connector called dual link. And this is by far the rarest of them all. I've also seen this type of connector referred to as extended pin HDMI. And basically the difference between this one and the standard one is it's much longer and larger. It has 29 pins instead of the standard 19. It's 21.2 millimeters wide, whereas the standard is 19.3 millimeters wide. And this connector is so rare that it was apparently never actually used in any actual product. And it's not like this is a new one that just hasn't caught on yet. No, this connector is the only other one that came out at the same time as the type A connector in the original HDMI 1.0 spec. I could literally only find a couple of pictures of this connector that seem to be in existence, and they do seem to be basically prototypes from cable manufacturers. For example, this one, you can see them actually holding, and I actually counted in there, there are 29 pins. So this is a type B connector, but you can't buy it anywhere. I don't think they really ever mass produced them because it wasn't used in anything. Another picture I found was literally of just the connector, not even a cable, and it seems to be from a Chinese manufacturer. But on the website that has this, it says that that manufacturer has not logged in since 2012, so I doubt they even make this anymore if they did it all in the first place. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, what was the purpose of this? Why was it even created? And the reason for its creation is actually kind of interesting. So if you didn't know, HDMI is actually backwards compatible with the old DVI connection for monitors. All you needed was a basic physical adapter that went from HDMI to the DVI interface, and it didn't require any kind of signal conversion at all. And apparently this compatibility between HDMI and DVI was very important to the creators of the HDMI spec, which by the way, was a bunch of companies you probably heard of, probably because at the time DVI was the more popular one, so they figured, to get HDMI off the ground, it had to be compatible. And you can actually see in this really old presentation of the HDMI 1.0 spec, DVI is pretty much mentioned everywhere. But my God though, this PowerPoint is hideous. I mean, it's got Comic Sans and Times New Roman on the same slide. It's an abomination, but, but still shows the kind of history of it. Anyway, here's where all this comes into play. You see regular DVI, which was single link, supported a resolution of 1920 by 1080 at up to 60 Hertz or it could be 2560 by 1600 at just 30 Hertz, but most monitors were 60 Hertz, so that was kind of like the de facto. And that was no problem. The standard HDMI 1.0 standard connector could handle that same amount of data, so it worked perfectly. However, there was also DVI Dual Link, which you might've heard of, which supported much more data across it. It supported a resolution of 2560 by 1600 at 60 Hertz, not just 30, and it also supported 3840 by 2400 at 
30 hertz. So at the time, DVI dual link supported much more data and resolution than the standard HDMI connector. So what they did instead to support the higher refresh rate and monitor resolutions, if necessary, was create a dual link version of the HDMI connector that would also support the same amount of data as dual link DVI. And then this dual link HDMI would be the same way compatible with dual link DVI as the standard to the single link DVI. So, all right, it actually seems like this might've been useful. So why did it never take off? Well, like I said, the type B connector was actually created at the same time as the standard A connector, just in the very original spec. From the get-go, this kind of was planned in, but it was more of like a future-proofing type connector. Not really any monitors at the time needed this kind of high resolution. And if they did, they'd probably just use DVI, which was way more popular at the time that HDMI came out. So basically no manufacturers were making monitors that needed this much data, so they just never put this connector into anything. But here's the important thing. HDMI obviously was not the final version. There was a couple more versions. And by version 1.3 in 2006, just a couple years later, the single link standard HDMI connector and cable was able to handle more data and bandwidth than even a DVI dual link was. So at that point, a standard HDMI cable was able to do the job that the original dual link HDMI cable was created for before it ever needed to even be used. For example, according to statcounter.com, which keeps statistics of screen resolutions, they go back as far as 2009. So not even as far back as when HDMI 1.3 came out, but even in 2009, only 1% of people had full HD 1080p screens. So you can imagine how few people people, if any, would have had higher than full 1080p screens back in 2006 when 1.3 came out. Because remember, even HDMI 1.0 could handle 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. In fact, one of the earliest full HD TVs I could find was the Panasonic TH65PX500 from 2005. So even this TV, which did have standard HDMI, only needed standard HDMI because even that one being 1080p top of the line didn't need any more than that. And then when HDMI 1.3 came out just a year after that was released, then it far exceeded any TVs even at the time. So at this point, it looks like we're probably never gonna see a dual link version of the HDMI cable. I mean, I guess technically the spec still exists. So if TVs came out in the future that really did exceed standard HDMI cable possibilities, they might resurrect it and add it to TVs, but that seems like it's probably not likely for a while. So anyway, now that you know all about these HDMI connectors, you can be the life of the party at the next one you go to by sharing all these fun facts and impressing everyone. I'm sure they'll love it. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to like the video and subscribe. I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. If you guys want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I was talking about different types of QR codes or 2D barcodes that you may have seen before and wondered why some of them look different. Spoiler alert, they're not all QR codes. So I explain all about that in that video right there you can click on. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.